كذبت ثمود المرسلين إذ قال لهم أخوهم صالح ألا تتقون إني لكم رسول أمين فاتقوا الله وأطيعون وما أسألكم عليه من أجر إن أجري إلا على رب العالمين أتتركون فيما ها هنا آمنين في جنات وعيون وزروع ونخل طلعها هضيم وتنحتون من الجبال بيوتا فارهين فاتقوا الله وأطيعون ولا تطيعوا أمر المسرفين الذين يفسدون في الأرض ولا يصلحون قالوا إنما أنت من المسحرين ما أنت إلا بشر مثلنا فأت بآية إن كنت من الصادقين قال هذه ناقة لها شرب ولكم شرب يوم معلوم ولا تمسونا بسوء فيأخذكم عذاب يوم عظيم فعقروها فأصبحوا نادمين فأخذهم العذاب إن في ذلك لآية وما كان أكثرهم ربك لهو العزيز الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد كذب أصحاب الحجر المرسلين وآتيناهم آياتنا فكانوا عنها معرضين وكانوا ينحتون من الجبال بيوتا آمنين الله سبحانه وتعالى said verily the dwellers of الحجر And you will see the word Al-Hijr translated as a rocky tract or a rocky area because it is, that is what it's derived, the name derived from. And that is really the nature of the geography of that area. The nature of the land is a very rocky land and it's uh, mountains and hills in the, uh, on, on the uh, eastern, uh, northeastern, northwestern shore of, of Arabian, Arabian Peninsula. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the dwellers of Al-Hijr denied the messengers. All the messengers, because all the messengers represent one message, and denying one prophet, denying one messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is denying the entire chain of messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. And Allah said that denied all the messengers. And we gave them our signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them the signs, and we will speak about that a little bit more detail. But they were averse to them, and they used to hew out dwellings from the mountains feeling themselves secure. They felt secure because they used to carve their houses into the mountains and they uh, inhabited this area like we said that you see on this map in the uh, shore uh, between uh, basically if you're going from Medina to Tabuk there will be Al-Hijr will be on the way and that's what happened when the Prophet وسلم, went out in the expedition of Tabuk And he passed by Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions by what is known today as Madain Salih, as the cities of Salih, Nabi Salih Alaihi Wasallam, and that is the area of Al Hijr. And the Prophet, the hadith is, is authentic that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered his Sahaba to feel the, the power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and to cry while they're passing in that area. I said, if you don't, if you can't go into go into that area then you have to go there in humbleness and cry for your sins because you are in a land where the inhabitants of this land were tormented because what they have done uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, if you're not in that state of mind, do not enter. Do not enter those, th that area uh, of Al-Hijr. And 
I uh, wanted to bring some pictures, and, and I almost did, of some of the, uh, what is really the relics that are le left there in the area of Al Hijr. And the only reason I didn't do that, because it is really not well uh, documented that all these houses that are craved in the rocks are, are, do, re do belong to the people of, of Thamud. If you go on the internet and you look up Fanda and Saleh, or the area is called today in Saudi Arabia Al Ula, you will find all of these pictures. They're all, they're all over. And they're really, you'll see huge places carved in the rocks. And, and most of these are tombs and graves, graveyards, and things like that are all in, in, the, uh, in the rocks and in the mountains. But some uh, historical references say these are the relics of Al Anbaq, which is another different uh, civilization that thrived in South Jordan. And they had the city of Al Petra or Al Betra, and that, that also the entire city is huge and it's all carved in stone. So there is really not a lot of, of knowledge uh, to authenticate uh, those pictures and relate them to Madain, to the actual uh, relics of the people of Thamud. Wallahu alam, and Allah knows best. It, may, it may or may not be. But we know that the people of Salih lived in this particular area because that is authenticated by the Sahaba when the Prophet وسلم, himself passed in that particular area. So who were the people of Thamud? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf verse 74, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the tongue of Salih, their Prophet alayhi salam, وَذْكُرُوا إِذْ جَعَلَكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عَادِ وَبَوَّأَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ تَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْ سُهُولِهَا قُصُورًا وَتَنْحِتُونَ الْجِبَالَ بُيُوتًا فَذْكُرُوا آلَى اللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْتَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people of Ad, remember when he made you successors after the people of Ad. Now the people of Ad inhabited the uh, area of southern Arabia, which is uh, bet it's really between Oman and Hadra Mount in that, in that particular area. And uh, the people of Al Hijr, and that area used to be called Al Ahqaf. And the people of Al Hijr are different geographically. But uh, his, their Prophet is telling them, You are the successors of the people of Ad. Successors in what? You are the, the heirs of the people of Ad in their power. They were the dominant power in, on the Arabian Peninsula at that particular time. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them that you have inherited the power that was given that was from in the people of Ad. You are the most powerful nation in that area and you are to be feared. وَبَوَّأَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And you are well settled, well inhabited on land. Meaning you, you're strong, you're powerful, you fear no one and you have established your might in that particular area. So that is also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that that civilization, that those people were powerful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that they were also wealthy. تَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْ سُهُورِهَا قُصُورًا In the valleys, they have palaces. So people that have palaces for their dwellings, they're, they're a wealthy nation, they're a wealthy people. And then furthermore, تَنْحِتُونَ الْجِبَالَ بُيُوتًا they crave out of the mountains their dwellings as well. So they have palaces in the valleys and mountain houses that they inhabited. That just tells you the luxury, the wealth, and the power of those particular people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonishing them, He said, فَذْكُرُوا أَلَى Allah, Remember the bounties, the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the graces that He bestowed upon you. وَلَا تَعْتَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ And do not go about making mischief on earth. However, they didn't. And the, the admonishment tells us that these people deviated from the message of Tawheed, from the message of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from the, the, the path of righteousness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for people. And for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them a messenger. And that messenger is somebody from amongst them. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a messenger to people, He sends them someone from amongst them. He sent them someone from within. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said like, like the same almost very parallel phrase to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Hud to the people of Ad. وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا Like we studied in the last session. To Ad we send their brother Hud. 
And the same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِلَى ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا And to Thamud people, we send their brother, Salih. What was the message of Salih alayhi salam? Salih alayhi salam, we read over, and this is, these verses in the chapter of Hud, in Surah Hud. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُ this, the message of Tawheed, the message worship Allah alone and abandon the idol, abandon your idols, abandon anything you associate with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya qawmi abudullah. The same message for all the prophets. Message number one, always. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Always. For all the prophets, through mankind, there is no other message that is the pivotal message of all the messengers. Oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but Him. There is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. He indeed brought you out from earth and settled you within to build on earth. Ask for His forgiveness and then repent back to Him. إِنَّ رَبِّي قَرِيبٌ مُجِيبٌ Indeed, my Lord is near. Is near to you by His forgiveness. Is near to you by His loving. Is near to you by His bounties. Is near to you by His graces. إِنَّ رَبِّي قَرِيبٌ He is near to you. Mujib. And He will respond to you. He is responsive to your call. So the first da'wah, the first way that Hud alayhi, that uh, Salih alayhi salam is the same method when Hud alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam called people to the way of Allah for the loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the forgiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yet for the almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he called them first not to be punished not to be to be done for the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he called him, he said, come to him and he'll forgive everything you have done. Come in repentance and he will accept you. And if you seek him, he is indeed near. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna qaribun, inna, inna rabbi qaribun mujib. My Lord indeed is, is near and responsive to your call. And they said, قَالُوا يَا صَالِحُ قَدْ كُنْتَ فِينَا مَرْجُوًا قَبْلَ هَذَا O Salih, you actually, you have been among us a figure of good hope. You were somebody that we wish that you were our chief. You are somebody who is important. You are someone that we like and love and respect. قَدْ كُنْتَ مَرْجُوًا فِينَا قَبْلَ هَذَا And they're just, you know, they're saying, why are you, you why you to change our way? We thought you were with us. You thought you're, you're one of us, and not only that, you're one of the best amongst us. But that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses His prophets. How, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses His messengers. The best of the best. The cream of the crop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the best people in their honor, in their akhlaq, in their manners, in their character. And that's how they knew Salih. And the people of Thamud knew Salih as one of the most honorable as someone that they would love for, for him to lead them, to be their leader. They said, قَدْ كُنْتَ فِينَا مَرْجُوًا قَبْلَ هَذَا You were somebody that we had great hopes for. But what changed that? La ilaha illallah. La, they didn't like what he was saying. He, they didn't like la ilaha illallah. And they said, أَتَنْهَانَ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ مَا يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا you, you want us to stop worshipping what our fathers used to be worshipping? And that's the only argument they're presenting. It's not, let's discuss your message. Let's, what, is, what is this, what you're calling us to? Why do you want us? They, all they said is, you want us to change the ways of our fathers. You want to change the way of our ancestors. And we are indeed very suspicious of your call. In this same sentence, they're contradicting themselves. They're telling, who, they're telling Salih that you're one of the best people we know. But yet, just because you want to change the ways of our fathers, we are going to reject everything you say. And that was their, 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 uh, their way of thinking about the message of Salih alayhi salam.
That was their logic, if there was any logic. So what did Salih tell them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Shu'ara, in the verses 141 and 152. And by the way, the, the main three surahs that you'd like to, to read about Salih would be Surah Al-A'raf, Surah Hud, and Surah Al-Shu'ara. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Actually, Thamud rejected, belied the messengers. Again, plural. Just to remind us that all the messengers are the same. لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله. We do not differentiate with any of the messengers because they are coming with the same message. The same aqeedah, the same creed, the same understanding of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the jurisprudence can change, the sharia can change, the law can change from one nation to another. But the message of tawheed is always the same. كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ صَالِحِ Again, when their brother Salih told them, أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Don't you fear your Lord, don't you fear your Creator, don't you fear Allah. إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ أَمِينٌ Indeed, I'm just a trustworthy messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just delivering the word of the Lord. And they're telling him that, yeah, we know you're, you're Amin, we know you're trustworthy. The same thing parallels with the life of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was his title before da'wah? as sadiq al amin The honest, the trustworthy, the truthful. And immediately when he said, La ilaha illallah, he became what? He became kazab, he became majnoon, he became a liar, he became a madman. Because of La ilaha illallah. Because they, he wants to give him the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message of the truth. And that is a change that they do not like for one reason or another. And we'll go over that. إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ I mean, you know I'm trustworthy and I'm bringing the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ So fear Allah and obey my word. I'm taking you to the right path. I'm taking you for your own good. For something that you will be rewarded for in this life and in the hereafter. وَمَا أَسَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرٍ I want nothing. I want no reward from you. إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ My reward only from the world, from the Lord of the worlds. The same, these words, do you, do you feel the same parallel between the words of Salih alayhi salam and the words of Hud alayhi salam? Almost the same things, almost the same phrases. Intentionally so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals those for us because it is the same thing. Those messengers, when they come, they want nothing from their people. The, the, Pagans of Quraysh came to the Prophet ﷺ and offered him the world, offered him the kingdom of Arabia. They said, if you want to be the king, we will make you the king. If you want to be the wealthiest person, we will make you the wealthiest person. If you want our money, we'll give you our money. If you want to be our chief, we will make you our chief. And this is the same thing. In ajriya illa ala Allah, I want nothing from you. My reward only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a lesson for the dua. That is a lesson for anyone that calls for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the very sentence we have to understand that we expect nothing from people. When you call anyone from, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have your expectations only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, أَتُتْرَكُونَ فِي مَا هَا هُنَا آمِنِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعُيُونَ وَزْرُوعٍ وَنَخْلٍ طَلْعُهَا هَضِينَ He said, you, you are left here in a safe place. Now they were powerful and they had those fortresses in the mountains and no one can attack them, no one can take them out, no one can threaten the people of Thamud. And he said, this, who gave you that safety? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The parallel of that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's speaking to Quraysh. لِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشًا إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Quraysh of the same thing. That Allah has given you the wealth, the sustenance, and Allah has made you safe in your homes. And safety in the country, safety in the dwelling, is one of the most important things. And it's a bounty, it's a gift from the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, you are safe in your places. في جنات وعيون In gardens and in springs flowing with water. And that was the state of Arabia at that time. And I think that there is a lot of, uh, actually, 
evidences that Arabia used to be gardens and used to be uh, a very fertile place in ancient times. And that is one of the evidences in the Quran. That that area today, if you go there, it's the barren desert. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that it used to be gardens and springs and rivers. Wazurur. And they have all these fertile lands that are giving them the, the crops. Wanakhl. And then the palm trees. And the palm trees is one of the best trees. The Prophet sallallahu gave the similitude of a palm tree to the believer. Because every part of it is very useful. And whatever you do with the palm tree is going to benefit somebody. The leaves of the palm tree, the trunk of the palm tree, and the fruits of the palm tree. Even the, everything in, in the date is very useful. And everything in that plant itself is very useful. And he said, Allah gave you all of these palm trees. And the fruits of which are very soft and easy to swallow and easy to digest. So it's very healthy. When we break our fast in Ramadan, we break it on dates because it's one of the best things that you can put in your, in your stomach, in your empty stomach. And it's almost a complete, really complete nutrition for, the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for any person. And we know when Maryam alayhi salam, when Maryam was in labor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent her dates. So this is the, the importance of, the, of uh, the palm tree. Allah said, and, and this is what he gave you. وَتَنْحِتُونَ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا فَارِهِينَ And of the mountains, you are, in, you are craving out these, these houses, these palaces. Why you're doing this in boastfulness and arrogance, you have no use for it. This is just, this is just to boast their status and their power. Same status, same story as the people of Ad. And the same story of any tyrant. Many tyrants and many tyrant nations, when you say they will have big monuments to show power, they will build things that, that spend a lot of money on that are absolutely useless, just to show that they can. Right? And, and their prophets is telling them that you're doing this, Farihin, just to show your skill and just to show your power. Fattakullah, fear Allah, that gave you all of that and made you able to do all of that. وَأَطِيعُونَ and obey me. This is all I'm asking you. وَلَا تُطِيعُوا أَمْرَ الْمُسْرِفِينَ And do not follow the extravagant. Do not follow your chiefs, your leaders that are leading you astray. الَّذِينَ يُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Don't you see that they're just spreading corrupt on earth? وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ And they do not reform your status. Do not reform your conditions. So in a nutshell, in, in these verses, in Surah Al-Shara, Salih is just laying out his message and it's very simple. First, Tawheed. First, worship Allah alone and no association with. Second thing, that you have to build progress on this earth. He said, استعمركم فيها. You have an obligation to build. You have an obligation not to build only to boast, but you actually to make progress, to benefit people, to help others. استعمركم. That means Allah has given you a mission to build, to make progress on earth. And the last thing he said, that you have to fight corruption and address the wrongs, al-islah. So three things, tawheed, i'mar, and islah. In these verses he said, that's what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you for, and that's why he gave you all these means, and what do you do with it? You go astray and you, make, and you, and you become corrupt. And his way in, in calling to them, it's the merciful call to repentance and to forgiveness. And he's reminding them of all the gifts and all the graces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet he's warning them from the consequences of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what was the answer of Thamud? Again, قَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمٍ You hear this word, al-mala, the leader, again. Again and again and again. In Nuh, in Hud, in Ad, in Thamud, the same way. The chieftain, the people that have interest in, in keeping the status quo, in preserving power and wealth with themselves. The same way why Abu Lahab rejected the call of his own nephew, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's because they felt that that is threatening their status, their wealth, their trade. And the same thing that happens with all these leaders, all these chieftains, all these people 
that the, the, the quote unquote elite people that hold the power. فقال الملأ The chiefs and the leaders الذين استكبروا They were arrogant among his people. Who are they addressing? Who are they calling? الذين استضعفوا They're talking to the weak people among, among the people of Samud. Well, what happened to the weak people in Samud? To the poor, they went with Salih. Because they have no personal interest. They, they are more open-minded to the call of, of Salih alayhi salam. They're more open to the message of Salih alayhi salam. So they, they're addressing the believers around Salih and most of them were like most of the believers around the prophets. Most of the dedicated people that respond, they're not arrogant people and they're usually not very wealthy people. And they're asking him, why are you following him? And they said, Do you know for sure that Salih is indeed a messenger of his Lord? So the poor, the poor, the weak people, the followers of Salih السلام, the believers said, Yeah, we believe everything he was sent with. We are followers of him. We believe what he says. And then what do they say? Whatever you believe in, we reject. See, see their, their, their arrogance and their stubbornness. We don't even want to hear what you believe in. But whatever, whatever you believe in, we are going to reject. Because we are in a different class that you are. We belong to a different status. We are in a different society. We're the elite and you're the poor. So whatever you believe, we are going to reject. And that is, that is how they responded to the call of Salih salam. And then Salih addressed them even more. He said, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ let's, let's talk about this for a little bit. He said, أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِن كُنْتُ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّي And they started talking to the believers and to Salih to leave what they are in and just to keep, go back to the worship of idols and to follow the people of Thamud. He said, do you see if I was indeed, I have a clear proof from my Lord. He's a messenger of Allah. وَآتَانِي مِنْهُ رَحْمَةً And he is sending me with mercy. I mean, he's not telling them to abandon their wealth at all. He just said, do not use it in corruption. Do not use it to spread uh, vice on earth. Use it in, in reform. Use it in bringing people happiness. And worship Allah alone. That's all he's calling for. And he said, this mercy of Allah, if he gave it to me, and if I abandon that, if I discard that, فَمَنْ يَنْصُرُنِي مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ عَصَيْتُ Who of you are going to help me when I disobey my Lord? He's telling them, this is a very loving way to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, don't tell me to abandon my message. None of you can help me if I, if I discard my mission, if I abandon my mission with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will not increase me anything but in loss. What do they call him? They call him Kazabun Asher. Indeed, you are a very, very uh, bad liar. They said, you are a very clear liar. You, you are lying with this message, Ya Salih. And they started challenging him. And they said, إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مِنَ الْمُسَحَّرِينَ The same accusation. They said, you are indeed, a, you are just of those who are bewitched. You are a wizard. You are a sorcerer. You, you're just bringing magic. These, nothing, nothing you bring is true. And they said, مَا أَنْتَ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا فَأْتِي بِآيَا إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ You're but a human just like us. The same way they reject all of these prophets. So you're just human beings. Well, Allah said, He sends humans to humans. And if you are angels, they would send you angels. But you're human beings, and he's going to send you human from amongst you. And they said, you're just a human? Then bring us a sign if you are the truthful. They're challenging their prophet Salih to bring a sign, a clear sign, that he is truly a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in their clubs and in their gatherings, and Salih as he passes by, and they start to mock him, like they mock every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the unbelievers mock the believers. Like the elite mock the poor. That the, the arrogant mock those who are humble. And they said, O oh Salih, can you just bring us a sign? And he said, what do you want? And this is something that happens for the first time, as far as you know, when we are reciting all the, the stories of the Prophet so far. So Salih said, what do you want? What sign can I bring you so you can believe? 
And he is so concerned about his people. He just wants to save them from the punishment. If it's not in this dunya, it's coming in the hereafter for sure. So he said, what do you want? What would make you believe in me? And they said, do you see that huge rock over there? He said, yes. And they said, I, we want you to break that rock in half. And out of this rock, we want the biggest camel, the biggest she-camel. And they started just, you know, one said, no, no, we want a she-camel so she can have small camels for us. And he said, we want a she-camel. We want it big and huge. And we want it pregnant in its tenth month. And that is, that is a sign of a very, that's a very glorious sign for the Arabs at that time. It's called the Ishar. The Ishar is somewhat, is a camel that's pregnant, it's tenth month. And it is narrated in the Quran, وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُقِّلَتْ When those Ishar, the she camel that's pregnant, would stop. And, and to the Arabs, that is, that means all, all financial actions are stopping. If, if you don't deal with Ishar, because that's the wealth of the Arabs. And we wanted red because al-humr, the uh, humr al-nu'am, the red camels are one of the most, the most expensive, the best camels. And they started saying that we want this, and we gave them all the, all description of what they want. So he said, if I bring that to you, would you believe? He said, of course. They, to them, it just can never happen. He said, yeah, of course we would believe. Of course we would believe. And Allah subhanahu wa taala inspired Salih to pray to him so he can fulfill their, their, their request. And Salih prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used his dua. He used his supplication. We know every prophet has that one supplication that will never be rejected. And Salih said that that's his best way. That's his best chance of bringing his entire nation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's going to do exactly what they are asking for. It's not Salih that's, that's requesting that. Their request, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills the request of Salih, and the rock splits open, and a she camel comes out, and it's the biggest camel they've ever seen, and it's pregnant in its tenth month. And here it is, the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Salih said, Ya qawmi, here she is. Here she is. This is the she camel of Allah. Hadihi naqatullah. Be careful now. Now, you, you, didn't, you can't play with this anymore. Because when Allah subhanahu, when you ask Allah for something and you challenge His Prophet, and that is fulfilled, then that is it. Allah does not accept any fooling around after that. He said, be careful, هَذِهِ نَاقَةُ اللَّهِ لَكُمْ آيَةً This is a sign specifically for you, a miracle for you, the she-camel of Allah. فَذَرُوهَا تَأْكُلُ فِي أَرْضِ اللَّهِ Then leave it to eat and graze in the, in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not touch it with any harm because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seize you with, the, with the great torment if you did. So did they believe after they see this miracle, this very clear miracle happening before their eyes based on their own requests? What happened? They would not believe. Because... They are liars to begin. I mean, they were lying in the first place. They were stubborn that they will. They were just trying to to give Salih something he cannot meet, to give Salih a challenge that he just cannot fulfill, and to be to make him a mockery and a laugh, laughing stock of their unbelievers, of their elite people. They know they did not need the she camel to come out of the rock for them to know that they're rejecting the truth. They knew before the she camel came out in their own hearts that they were rejecting the truth. And that is what the word kafir means. Kafir is someone who covers up. And they are covering up inside of them the knowledge that la ilaha illallah, that there is no Lord but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what they were trying to do is to embarrass Salih before his believers, before the people that followed him said, he, he cannot do this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him he can. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that there is a test that comes with that she camel. It's not, you don't play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a price that you pay when you challenge Allah's will and when you challenge his prophets. And there will be a test for you. And what is the test? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
إِنَّا مُرْسِلُ النَّاقَةِ فِتْنَةً لَهُمْ We will send the she-camel as a test for them. فَارْتَقِبْهُمْ وَاسْتَضِرْ And watch them and just be patient. They're about to fall. They're about to break. Their true, truthful, bad nature, the truth, the truth of their bad nature is about to come out. وَنَبِّئْهُمْ What is the test? أَنَّ الْمَاءَ قِسْمَةٌ بَيْنَهُمْ That the water is shared between the she-camel and the people of Thamud. كُلُّ شِرْبٍ مُحْتَضَرٌ Each one's right to drink is being established by turns. Meaning the, the sheikh camel will drink the water of Thamud one day, and then the people of Thamud will drink the water the second day. They cannot drink from the water the same day that the she camel drinks from the water. And that is the condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set forth for them. Why is that? They are saying we are going to become believers, right? Now every belief has to come with a test. Do people think that they will be just left to say we believe and they are not being tested? This is in Surah Al-Ankabut. So the test for them, if you truly now become a believer and I fulfilled this miracle for you, then that's your test. Then be patient with that. And what they will do, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to milk it on the day they cannot drink the water. So they can drink milk one day and water the next day. And the she camel had a, her baby camel, and now they both come and drink one day, and they go back to the area of the rock. And the Prophet ﷺ actually showed the Sahaba where the well was, where the she camel would come and drink. And that was their, their way. And the people of Thamud did not believe. They continued on their stubbornness. And, and what happened after that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us that these people actually know in their heart where the truth is. Before the she-camel comes out. In Surah An-Naman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in verse 14, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ They belied and rejected the signs, the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrongfully and arrogantly. But deep in their hearts, deep in their souls, they have complete positive belief in it. They know that that is the truth. They are totally convinced that that is the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same challenges were given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you read Al-Isra, verses Surah Al-Isra or Surah Bani Israel, verses 90 through 94, the, the, the payments of Quraysh, they said, وَلَن نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ وَقَالُوا لَن نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تُفَجِّرَ لَنَا إِنَّ الْأَرْضِ يَنْبُوعَ أَوْ تَكُونَ لَكَ جَنَّةٌ مِّنْ نَخِيلٍ وَعِنَبٍ فَتُفَجِّرَ الْأَنْهَارَ خِلَالَهَا تَفْجِيرًا أَوْ تُسْقِطَ السَّمَاءَ كَمَا زَعَمْتَ عَلَيْنَا كِسَفًا أَوْ تَأْتِيَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ قَبِيلًا أَوْ يَكُونَ لَكَ بَيْتٌ مِّن زُخْرُفٍ أَوْ تَرْقَى فِي السَّمَاءِ وَلَن نُؤْمِنَ لِرُقِيِّكَ حَتَّى تُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْنَا كِتَابًا نَقْرَأُهُ قُلْ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّي هَلْ كُنْتُ إِلَّا بَشَرًا رَسُولًا they challenged the Prophet ﷺ and said, we will not become a believer until you show us that inside Mecca you will bring us the springs of water and rivers. And you have to have gardens of paradise inside the desert, you know, in Mecca. And you, you, you show us the rivers flowing through Mecca. Or you bring the sky falling down on us. This is what they're challenging the Prophet. Or bring Allah. SubhanAllah. They said, bring Allah and His angels before us. And we want you to ascend to heaven right before our eyes. And even if you ascended, we will not believe you unless you bring us a book that we can touch with your own hands, with our own hands. Why all of these signs? Why are all these challenges? Because they just don't believe and they will not believe no matter what. No matter what happens, it's the same thing. The stubbornness is coming from their hearts. And faith doesn't need all of these miracles. The truth doesn't need a lot of these proofs. Because it's deep in the heart, it's the innate nature, it's the fitrah of mankind. So Salih said, do not touch this. Do not touch the camel. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will torment you. This is your last thing. There will be no more. And what they say? They split into two different teams, two different sections. Part of them believed was Salih. And the believers, they, their faith was strengthened when they saw the, the ayah, when they saw the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what happens with these miracles. Now when you look, when you say to people about someone doesn't believe in Tawheed, doesn't believe in Iman, doesn't believe in Quran, if you tell them that this Quran has a lot of scientific signs and, 
and there are they they will now believe that and that doesn't bring faith to their heart it just settles the faith of the believers of someone who has faith it strengthens their iman and that's what happened to the believers around Salih when they saw the she camel miracle they knew they were with the right path and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased their iman on the disbelievers the pagans they continued on their stubbornness and they continued on their rejection so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they became two parties and they just split apart one with Salih and one against Salih and they said we, we will not believe and Salih said do not hasten your punishment ask Allah for forgiveness and they said we, you are a bad omen for us you are just bad luck for us you and your believers with us he said, Ta'irukum عند Allah. Your bad omen is with your Lord. Because you're bringing the bad omen upon you. Because he's telling them, do not hasten your punishment. He said, that punishment is just because of you. He said, no. It is because of what, you, what you're doing. This is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask for forgiveness. He said, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ تُفْتَنُونَ You are indeed going through a test. He's making this very clear for them. He said, you are now going through a very hard test. But then within the city there was this gang of nine people. Nine people that were the chiefs of the rejectors, the worst enemies of belief, the most pe- the people that, that wanted to reject and fight Salih to the end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in Surah Al Namil. They were just that group, you know, of friends, nine of them. What do they do? You sidun fil ard. They spread corruption on earth in Thamud. وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ And they do not reform. And what did they start doing and conspiring? They said, well, here is Salih. And the people around him, will, they will not leave him. And you have this miracle. And we just have to get rid of him. And to get rid of the miracle that he brought. So they said, let's kill Salih. They conspired to kill the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his messengers. al rusul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them. And what did they say? قَالُوا تَقَاسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ And the irony of this, they swore by Allah. Now these people that want to kill the messenger of Allah, they swore among themselves to, to keep the secrecy of their plan by Allah. تَقَاسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ لَنُبَيِّتَنَّهُ وَأَهْلَهُ We will kill him at night, in the darkest hour of the night. And then we will tell his family, you know, the, the one that will protect Salih, and they will say, why are you killing our cousin, our brother? And they say, we will tell them, ما شهدنا ما we, we didn't see that. And وَإِنَّا لَصَادِقُونَ We are truthful, because since we are going to kill him at night, then we can't really see well. So we will be telling the truth if we tell him, that's the conspiracy that they came up with. And they swore by Allah to kill the messenger of Allah. And Allah said, وَمَكَرُوا مَكْرًا and they plotted a plot, وَمَكَرْنَا مَكْرًا And we plotted a plot, and Allah planned His plan. And they, وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they could not perceive the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what they do, they said, let's get, first get rid of the camel. Let's get rid of the she camel. So they called the worst of them. And the worst of them was someone whose name was Qudar ibn Salih. And he is the leader of that nine, nine uh, people gang. And they called upon him to, to uh, perform and to accomplish the first mission by killing the camel of Salih, the camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَنَادَوْ صَاحِبَهُمْ And they called upon their, their comrade, their friend, their companion, Qudar. فَتَعَاطَى فَعَقَرْ And he took his sword and he went on and he killed the she camel. And in some narrations, Ta'ata, they take the word Ta'ata to mean that he was, uh, he drank some wine and he got himself into the trance and into, uh, uh, into being intoxicated and he went and killed the she camel. But some say that he just took his sword and went on and he killed the camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعَقَرُ naqa. So they killed. Who killed the camel? He's that one person that killed it, right? كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِطَغْوَاهَا إِذِنْ بَعَثَ أَشْقَاهَا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the worst of Thamud came out and killed the Naqa. But in this verse, Allah said they collectively killed the Naqa. Why is that? Who are they? The entire people of Thamud that supported that act, that called for that act, that were silent and did not stop that act knowing that it was going to happen. So all share the responsibility of that crime. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said all of them collectively killed the she camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَتَوْا عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِمْ And they defied the commandment of the Lord, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they, they even were worse than that. What do they do? Didn't Salih tell them, do not touch the she camel and you will be tormented? After they killed it, they saw the miracle with their own eyes. They knew that this is not an ordinary camel. They knew this was the camel of Allah. They knew this was a miracle sent to them. A sign and they killed it. And they said, Ya Salih, u'tina bima ta'iduna in kunta min al mursaleen Al A'raf 77, the worst rudeness. They said, now bring about the threats. Now bring on the torment. Show us what you can do. Show us what your Lord can do. This was the criminality of the mind of the people of Thamud. And how much they challenged Allah. And subhanAllah. And they said, now bring it on, if you're truly of the believers. And after they killed it, Hud said, تَمَتَّعُوا فِي دَارِكُمْ ثَلَاثَةِ إِيَّانِ It's a done deal. He said, enjoy your life. You have only three days to live. You have only three days left. He wanted to bring them mercy and they are asking for torment. They said, show us what you can do. فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تَعِدُنَا إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ And he said, تَمَتَّعُوا فِي أَدَارِكُمْ ثَلَاثَةَ أَيَّامِ ذَلِكَ وَعْدٌ غَيْرُ مَكْدُوبٍ Enjoy yourselves in your homes for three days. This is a promise. That's a threat from Allah. And this will not be belied. This will come true to you. And then in the first day, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described their status. And he said, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الرَّجْفَةِ An earthquake came to Thamud. فَأَصْبَحُوا فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ And that is the first torment of Thamud. And the torment of Thamud didn't come in one shape. It came in multiple shapes. And you will see different descriptions in the Qur'an about how they were tormented. Because they really were exaggerating in disobeying Allah and challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They killed the sign of Allah and they challenged the Prophet to bring on the torment and it came to them. And Allah said in Al-A'raf, فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الرَّجْفَةِ First an earthquake seized them. And, and I've had friends that were in an earthquake and they tell me that it's the worst experience that any human being can be. Total helplessness. You cannot, you have no control of anything. You just, you cannot do a thing. And most earthquakes last for just a few seconds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they were shaken really hard. They were on their knees in their own houses. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the shock of torment. He said they were shocked, like a thunderbolt of torment. A very disgracing, humiliating torment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they were, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they torment him with the sayha, with the scream that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely annihilated the people of Thamud with. And what happened to Salih? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna arsalna alayhim sayhatan wahida fakanu kahashim in muhtadah. In Surah Al-Qamar, he said, one scream, one loud, mighty cry, and they were all gone after the three days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And they were completely annihilated in their own houses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Salih. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا نَجَّيْنَا صَالِحًا وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا وَمِنْ خِزْيِ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ الْقَوِيُّ الْعَزِيزِ And when our commandment came, we saved Salih and those who believed with Salih alayhi salam. By a mercy from us. And from the disgrace and the humiliation of the torment of that day. وَأَخَذَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا الصَّيْحَةِ And those who, those who were, uh, who were uh, transgressors, those who wronged themselves, Allah take them with the sayha, with the awful mighty cry. فَأَصْبَحُوا فِي دِيَارِهِمْ جَاتِمِينَ 
كَأَلَّمْ يَغْنَ لَمْ يَغْنَوْ فِيهَا Like they never lived there. Like they never prospered there. Like they never built there. They were all gone. كَأَلَّمْ يَغْنَوْ فِيهَا أَلَا إِنَّ ثَمُودًا كَفَرُوا رَبَّهُمْ أَلَا بُعْدًا لِثَمُودِ Indeed, no doubt, Thamud disbelieved in their Lord. So away with Thamud. Allah is almighty and Allah is all powerful. And Allah gave them respite and gave them chances and sent them messengers and called upon them. And they increased in their stubbornness and they increased in their rejecting, it, rejecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they continued on to challenge the might and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Salih in the last scene of that particular story, in the very last scene, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us how Salih, what Salih did as he was looking at the ruin of his people. فَتَوَلَّى عَنْهُمْ وَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لَقَدْ أَبْلَغْتُكُمْ رِسَالَةَ رَبِّي وَنَصَحْتُ لَكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُحِبُّونَ النَّاصِحِينَ Then Salih turned away from them and he said, O oh my people, while they're dead and laying around, he said, I have indeed conveyed to you the message of my Lord. He's a messenger and he said, I fulfilled my job. I fulfilled my mission and I conveyed the message of my, my Lord and I have given you good advice. I advised you over and over again. But you like not good advisors, but you do not like the good advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of this particular story. And he reminds his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the callers to his way, to the way of Allah over time. Allah said, وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَن نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا أَن كَذَّبِ بِهَا الْأَوَّلُونَ And nothing stops us from sending the proofs, the ayat, the evidence, the sounds, the miracles, but that the people of the, old, of the ancient times, the old nations, denied them. He said, these people, when they see something like that, they say, if they think the prophet was a magician or a sorcerer, that will be a proof for them. And people who are going to any message, trying to defy it and trying to belie it and trying to say that this is falsehood, they, can, they will find anything to prove their point and to increase their stubbornness and rejection. And Allah said that that's why the miracles, and that's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu his miracle was the truth. His miracle was he came up with the book of Quran, the living miracle, the everlasting miracle. And all the other physical miracles last for just the short time. The people that see it are the people that actually can live that miracle. All everybody else hears about it and has to have faith to believe it. But faith is required to believe even if the... وَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَانُوا هُمْ أَشَدَّ مِنْهُمْ قُوَّةً وَأَثَارًا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَأَخَذَهُمْ فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَاقٍ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانَتْ تَأْتِيهِمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَكَفَرُوا فَكَفَرُوا فَأَخَذَهُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّهُ قَوِيٌّ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ